You're listening to Chain Leak, Leak, the crypto news podcast with your host, Joshua Roomsberg. Follow and subscribe today. Welcome to the Chain Leak podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Roomsberg. Today's episode is about Wi Fi map connecting the world. Today's guest, Gary Bogatin. Welcome to the show, brother. Hey, glad to be here. All right. So for the listeners, give them an introduction to Wi-Fi Map and what you guys are looking to do for the industry. Sure. So we're a deep in play, which is a decentralized physical infrastructure. Yeah. And what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to leverage the blockchain technology uh, to bring connectivity, um, to, to open up connectivity for the world, to make sure that okay. everybody can get connected. Uh, it doesn't matter if you got money or you don't. We believe that internet today, it's like water or food. You, you can't live without it. It's right. very hard to survive, yeah. So that's our goal. Um, we started off as a Wi-Fi finder, and we basically are decentralized, so we are crowdsourced. And okay. all of our users just add hotspots around the world. And that's why we've been around for eight years, and that's why we kind of thought that the tokenization of Web3 part of it made sense because we were kind of always Web2.5. Uh, yeah. with the decentralization, and we, we rely on all of our card sourcing to put in all the hotspots. Uh, now, currently we have, oh, sorry, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, no, you're good. So when you talk about decentralized internet infrastructure, what does that look like from an end-user perspective? So it, it looks like you don't have to have a carrier. So you're in the U.S., you have yeah. AT&T or Comcast, you don't have a carrier. So as you're walking around the streets, let's say you don't have 5G, so it's not yeah. necessarily an issue that we as Americans have, but a lot of poorer countries who are developing, when they travel, yeah. they can't afford to, to buy the local 5G. So when they're walking around Miami and they're here from, you know, let's say Africa or India, and they don't have the capacity to buy the 5G, they yeah. can basically know where all the hotspots are and log in and get internet. So they're able to make phone calls back home. They're able to work if they need to. They're able to attend school if they're doing school online. So we're actually just bridging it to allowing people to get free internet uh, when they're traveling, particularly. Okay. So now when you look at the bigger picture for low income communities that may not have access to this type of infrastructure on the regular, what does the pricing look like? If I was a high school or a college student that didn't have access to the internet, what would the pricing look like if I wanted to connect? Yeah, that's a great question. So we believe everything should be free, like the services that are all like water should be free, air is free. Okay. We believe that you can't live without internet. So you download our app completely free. Uh, there are some add-ons like eSIM and VPN. But it, okay. That's only if you need it. It's uh, completely free. Uh, we have 170 million downloads, I believe, um, are between Google and uh, Apple. Okay. And uh, we have 4.5, 4.6 rating, 2.5 million reviews. Like people love our product and it's, it's absolutely com completely free. And even more so, I'll tell you, you can add hotspots mm -hmm. and you can earn Wi-Fi tokens. So not only is it free, you can actually make money or, or get tokens um, by, by helping co contribute to the community. Okay. Now that's another angle because I was checking out the application this morning and to use the VPN within the application, you could watch ads to get access to the VPN feature. So you're saying with the Wi-Fi feature, you don't have to watch ads or anything? No, absolutely not. You, you just download the app and it'll tell you all of the free hotspots around your area. Uh, typically, there are restaurants, cafes and stuff, hotel yep. lobbies. And uh, you just head over there and you connect. So uh, you see where you'll be. You could download an offline map. Uh, you know, so you know where everything is in the area that you're about to go to. Uh, with the VPN and the ESIM, it, there is a fee. Uh, it's a premium service. There's also okay. an ad-free service, which is pretty premium. But we try to keep our ads pretty pretty low-key, so um, it, it's pretty good. And what's interesting is you can actually, by contributing to the ecosystem, earn Wi-Fi tokens and then redeem those Wi-Fi tokens for free ESIM and for free VPN. So you don't even have to look at the watch the ads if you don't want to. Okay, just, now... You know, with the uh, eSIM, what type of features do you get with that eSIM? 
Is it only phone calls? Is it data? Is it text messages? What does that look like for the plans? Sure. So it's actually pretty cool. It's um, You buy it by gigabyte, so there's no actual phone in it okay. or text, but you can use WhatsApp, Telegram, which is usually what travelers do anyway because yeah. they're out of town. Uh, it's kind of like second nature. Maybe not so much here in the U.S., but outside of the U.S., everybody uses WhatsApp and, and Telegram yeah. instead of texting or SMS. And you, you have access to it in, I believe, 70 countries. So you can download. So I, when I was traveling to Europe, I'll, I'll give you a personal example, traveling to Europe last year, and I, I didn't want to go looking for a SIM card once I got there. Right. So what I did is I downloaded the eSIM before I got there. Um, it took around one minute or something, really simple. I bought like one or two gigabytes. And when I arrived in Europe, every country I went to, I just I was seamless, seamless 5G and 4G connectivity, depending where. Uh, it, it's That's a pretty cool, cool head, headache-free uh so the infrastructure for the eSIMs is database solely. Correct. Yes. Okay. There's no phone number involved. No, not yet. Eventually, we want to bring that out. But right now, no. Yeah, there's no phone number. Okay. Now, let's go back to the Wi-Fi features for Wi-Fi map. When you look at, say, I was going to Starbucks and I connected to their Wi-Fi, if I wanted to earn... I would share the password to that network. How does that work? Correct. So if, if that Starbucks happens to not already be on our ecosystem, yep. uh, you would share. You would go into the app and you would share. Uh, it's pretty quickly. You just click share and it just shares. Uh, you could also run a speed test on it to earn Wi-Fi because it's really important to make sure that everything that we add works well. Uh, it's yep. functioning. And, you know, because we don't want to send people who are needed for work to a place that has pretty bad Wi-Fi. So For we sure. make sure we, by running the speed test, and, and we again, we, we give Wi-Fi tokens to contributors that run that speed test, uh, so it's it's incentivized. Speaking of, uh, speaking of speed tests, I actually went to the Starbucks here last month when I was uploading my last podcast episode. The power went out because we got a bad snowstorm. And I went to Starbucks to try and upload this 14 gigabyte video and it was not happening. They didn't want no part of that. So the speed definitely plays a factor when you're working and you need to be able to connect to public Wi-Fi. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's why it's important for us to incentivize the community to do that for us. Uh, we have AI on the back end that's taking in all that data that you guys are, our crowdsource is putting up either the Wi-Fi hotspots or the speed tests. And we're making sure to only show you the ones that we are comfortable that are A, working, and B, that are working well, right? So we're not sending you to a place that at one point six months ago had Wi-Fi, but nobody's connected for the last six months. Right. Now, when you look at the global landscape of Wi-Fi map, which countries do you feel have contributed the most? Oh, that's a good question. Um, our biggest users, which is an easier question for me to answer, come okay. from Indonesia, uh, India, Brazil, and the Middle East, right? So these are our biggest regions of people who okay. use it. The contributors are a little harder for me to, to uh, pinpoint, but I would assume that it's probably a very similar demographic of people who yeah. are adding stuff. Yeah. So for end users who are looking to use this product, you're saying them four regions are where the most users are interacting with this application? Yeah, correct. Yeah. So the most downloads, the most most users. Uh, India is growing, you know, leaps and bounds. It's amazing. Indonesia is good. The entire Middle East has been a great area. And uh, in South America, it's mostly Brazil. Yeah. So like okay. it's, uh, that's where it's coming from. Those are where the users are coming from. Now, have you guys thought about or approached people in South Africa? Uh, so we don't approach necessarily people. We just, we have our app. Uh, I'm sure there's many downloads there. I don't, I don't have the stats in front of me, but uh, we're, we're like in almost 200 countries. So for sure there are hotspots in South Africa and there's probably a very dense because it's a big country. Uh, so you, you're, you're covered pretty well in South Africa. Uh, so I assume we have a decent amount of users there. It just, they don't happen to be in the top five. Of the countries gotcha. that you Because I'm thinking about different regions of the world where 
low income families or the infrastructure may not even be built up for 5G networks within cities. Um, now, for the infrastructure of these Wi Fi networks, is it business Wi Fi networks, personal? Can it be mobile? How does that work out? So we typically target business because we want to be we don't want it to be one way. So we don't want a person to just use somebody else's internet and they don't get anything out of it. Right. Uh, so the business is, you know, we're one of the few apps that bring off online traffic offline. So let's say you happen to be in Johannesburg or Cape Town, let's say in South Africa, and yep. you need to work. So I want to send you to a place where you're going to get be able to work, where you're going to be able to connect but also get what you need. So let's say you go to a cafe, you're going to get a coffee most likely if you're there for a couple hours. So yeah. the business benefits and the business is happy that we brought that traffic to them and you're happy because you got into it. So we're always trying to be fair and you know make sure that everybody benefits. Obviously, it's not every case that everybody benefits. but So that's why we kind of uh, like the businesses and the businesses like us because we bring them traffic. So it's kind of a win-win-win for everybody. Right. Now... When you think about the safety of using these types of networks, when you connect to a Wi-Fi network on Wi-Fi map, is it automatically encrypted onto VPNs? So it's not. So that's why we have that VPN feature. Okay. Uh, our goal is we're, we're not a VPN provider, right? So our goal is to make it free to the user. Unfortunately, yeah. since we don't provide it, we can't give it away for free. But what we can do is by you putting hotspots and speed tests, you get the Wi-Fi token, which you can then use to redeem VPN for free. So yeah. let's say you added, I don't know, 25 hotspots. Now you can get the VPN for free for that month. As yeah. well as, you know, like you mentioned, ads in the beginning, you can watch ads. So our goal is always to make it as cheap as possible for everybody to access those things like VPN and, and Wi-Fi. How do you ensure an end user is safe on your platform? So it's it's not necessarily our job to ensure that their the Wi-Fi that they're connecting to is is protected. So if okay. you go to a Starbucks, like we can't make sure that that's why we really guarantee that there's right. right, right. But but you know Starbucks that's that's on Starbucks for, to protect it, and it's also on the user to make sure that the the place that they go to it is fair and, and looks legit. Uh, but right. we always recommend the VPN. That you know it's it's very cheap uh, for U.S. standards. And we try to make it as affordable as, as ever with the you know Wi-Fi token and the ads to lower the price as much as we can. So if you were to connect to a Wi-Fi hotspot on the application, would you turn on the VPN before you connect? Yeah, yeah. So if you have, well, before you connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot, not before you connect to the app. So yeah. you, you can turn it on at any time, right? So you're on the app, you see it, you turn on the VPN, you connect. And that's how you should do it, not even on our app. Like, there's no real difference if you're doing it through our app or just going to a Starbucks, like you said, to upload your video. Yeah. Like, to protect yourself, you should be on a VPN because you're okay. on a public network. And and a lot of people forget that, right? Like, yeah, no, I didn't use a VPN that day, so that's crazy. Um, when you look at the Wi-Fi map ecosystem, what types of partnerships are you guys putting together? Okay. Yeah, that's that's important. Um, so from the partnership side, we have a lot of people that come to us, right? Because we have a lot of user base. We have 5 million active users. And like okay. I mentioned, 170 million downloads. So we're constantly inundated with partnership requests. So yeah. our main goal is, does this partnership bring value to our users, right? So that's how we run our business. Our business okay. is always run as, like, if I put it on your phone, Will you use it and will you benefit from it? Or is it just there for us to make money? Then we're not interested. And on the That's crypto cool. side, we're partnering up with like big partners. Uh, we partnered up with Sweatcoin. Uh, we partner up with guys who we believe have good projects, who have good teams, and they're just not trying to, you know, go to a big platform and just get clout. Uh, we're looking for actual projects that have some value to our users always. That's our main goal. Are you guys thinking about like new integrations into the application? When you look at partnerships, are you looking at um, a variety of other chains you could potentially partner with um, for wallet integrations? What what other types of partners do you feel you need in Web3? 
So from, from the business aspect of partners, we're looking to bring in like travel. We're looking to bring in people that can benefit from like, because most of our guys are traveling, right? So yeah. uh, can we bring in Uber and get it to them cheaper? Can we bring in Lime and get it to them cheaper because we have affiliate link that we can just pass along to our users? Um, from the Web3 perspective, we're always looking for really cool projects that we feel like integrate well. Um, from the wallet aspect, uh, we are going to most likely add a wallet in 2024. Uh, currently, we're using Fireblocks, uh, so it's internal mapping. So okay. everybody had can see the tokens in their app, but it's you know one commingled account where where it's mapped. Um, yeah. our, our goal is to make sure that that's it, your wallet, and you can take it with you. Uh, we're hoping to integrate that in 2024. Um, okay. When it comes to Web3 partnerships, it's it's just important for us that it's a legit project and it brings value. That's what that's the main thing we're looking for is value to our users. If you could name. One feature that a potential Web3 partner could bring to the table, what type of features could that partnership add to the application and the experience for an end user? Oh, um, I, I kind of might be personally, there's a couple of different routes we could go. Me personally, I really like discounts. You know, I, I think the people yep. who we serve are under. You know, they, they're not necessarily coming from the wealthiest countries. And I think bringing discounts to people is important. Um, and by by having the amount of traffic that we do and the amount of traffic that we're able to send out to people, I think a lot of companies would like to work with us and give our users discounts. And we'd love to pass those discounts on to our users. So those are the partnerships that I think are important for us. I just thought of a bright idea for something like that. If you partnered with, say... Pizza Hut and Pizza Hut mapped out every single one of their locations for the Wi Fi. But once you connect to that Wi Fi, you get a pop up inside the application for 10, 20% off your order for connecting to their Wi Fi. I think that would be sick. Yeah, those are exactly, you know, I think that's what we're looking for in 2024. Um, that, that's the type of partnership we want. We want big companies that people can use all around the world globally and something that gives value to our users by giving discount. Hey, I want to get a pizza anyway. Yeah. You know, if I go to Domino's, if I go to Pizza Hut, hey, I could get free Wi Fi and I could get ten percent off a pie or and a drink. Right. That's yeah. that's a no brainer for everybody. It's a, like it goes back to that win 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 kind of scenario. Yeah. Um another thing like that would be inside the application, you we talked about moving your tokens externally and you said that's a feature you guys are working on how about redeeming your rewards for discounts on websites or other applications if you wanted a ten dollar amazon gift card and you put in the work to get that would you be able to redeem for something like that in the future so we probably will work on something like that for now you can redeem it into into USD or, or fiat currency, let's call it, depending where you okay. are. So, you know, once you have the Wi-Fi token and you take it off, we tr we're trading on three or four major centralized exchange and a couple of major decentralized exchanges. So okay. you can always convert it into fiat and then use So it, it kind of, it's an extra step, but eventually, yeah. of course, we want to take away as many steps as possible to make it simpler for everybody. Now, when you look at the scope of what you guys have built out in the integrations, what do you feel are the biggest challenges for Wi-Fi map at this time? Yeah, so fr from the business side, we've been around for eight years. There's always challenges. And okay. you, you have two, as a business developer, you have two ways to look at challenges. Either it's a challenge and, oh, my God, how are we going to get over this? Or it's part of regular life, right? Like every business out there has challenges every single day, every single moment. Um, we've been around for eight years. We've done a good job of uh, overcoming these challenges, and I don't see anything major. Uh, on the crypto side or the Web3 side, the biggest challenge we have, I think, is just to, to be known. I think we're a very special project. I think there's not a lot of projects who have an actual use case day one, which we do. Uh, yeah. We have a utility day one. There's not a lot of projects out there that have 5 million active users who love this project that are not on the project just to get paid. They've been yeah. with us before the tokenization. Um, and we are an actual... so. Our biggest challenge there is just to make sure everybody hears about us. 
Like we're not, you know, because we're so um, focused on the actual product to make sure everybody likes the product. We're not as focused um, on just going on every crypto channel and screaming from our, about us. We will at some point. So right now is a good time. So your users get to hear about us early. But, uh, that, you know, we're working with exchanges. We have uh, three major exchanges or four major exchanges now. And we want to get on the bigger exchanges. That That's our main goal. Okay. Now, when you look to the future over the next six months to a year, when you look at features, when you look at partnerships, new innovations, what do you see for the next six months in the next one year for Wi-Fi map? So the, so the big one that we're working on is we want to bring on all of our speed tests onto the uh, blockchain. So we want to, we okay. want everybody to be able to see. Yeah. So it, it, it doesn't sound like a major move, but it really is because it allows. You're saying that data. Build. The data, right? So we want people to build on top of that data, right? So we want to give that. We're going to use it like gas fees, where people could come and spend a little bit of Wi-Fi. It's not going to be people; it's going to be businesses, and they're yeah. going to be able to get all of that data, and they're going to be able to build on top of us, absolutely free, kind of like you know Ethereum or whatever. Just pay a gas fee, yeah. and you can build on top of us. So that's our big thing. We're hoping to put that out in the next six to twelve months. Uh, okay. You know how it is with technology; sometimes it takes a little bit longer than you expect. Right. But, but we're pretty good on, on delivering. Um, the, the partnerships are huge. We're talking to some major players. Unfortunately, I can't, can't mention their names, but, uh, okay. you know, our goal is to bring on like the pizza huts as an example, as your example, yep. to the gym and give out discounts. Uh, it seems everybody we talk to loves, loves the idea and loves the project. So we're seeing a lot of cool things coming out in the next six to 12 months. Another thing, when you, when you just mentioned pizza hut again, I thought about a mall concept. If you could connect to a mall's Wi-Fi, and depending on which aspect of the mall you're connecting to, if it's the left wing, right wing, you could get discounts for the stores in that wing of the mall. That would be crazy, too. So there's a lot of different ways you could twist that for the discounts aspect. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. so there's, you know, there's so much. Also, like if you're a pizza shop in, in uh, Michigan or Miami, and you see you're being slow right now, you can go on, you could just pop up a little ad and say, hey, go go buy two slices, you get a free soda right now for the next yeah. hour and a half. And it just pops up in the app. They pay a little bit of marketing via Wi-Fi tokens, which obviously yeah. benefits the ecosystem. Also, then once we put everything on the blockchain, they're going to be able to just buy that information or with using gas money uh, and, and then just figure out what's the best process for them. So they can see how many people are in a one-mile radius from them and say, oh, there's 800 people on this app where the one mile radius. They do a push notification. That'd be exactly. sick. Exactly. Just to those 800 people. And and then you're bringing in those people. And obviously, you're paying for 800 people. And, and you know exactly how many people you're going to bring in. So you're right. expecting, let's say, 10% of that or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways you guys could implement real world businesses, not just Web3. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's, that's our goal. Our goal is always to make sure, number one, to make sure the users are happy and they make it cheap and free and easy to use. And then B, make sure that the businesses also have value, right? We don't want to just, because when it's a one-side value proposition, it never works in the long term. Never right. ever works in the long term. You need both sides to be happy with the proposition. And that's, that's our goal. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to go out to these businesses and say, hey, come join us, right? Because we have this big, Nomad community and it's growing. We're growing every every couple of months. We're going in users. We're seeing contributions through the roof. Um, we're we're hitting records every single month in everything across users and stuff. If you guys want to join Wi-Fi Map, you can join them on Twitter. Do you guys have a Telegram? Oh, uh, we do. Yeah, we do. Okay. Uh, What's the website as well? Uh, so, so there's two two websites. Uh, there's Wi-Fi Map, and there's also We Connect You, which is the token side of the business. Okay. Uh, so it's a W E Connect, and then the letter U, uh, and I believe it's .io at the end for both. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we conclude this interview? No, I think we hit it all. I guess, I guess the main points is we have five million active users. We have 170 or 80 million downloads. 
Uh, we have 4.5 plus stars in all of the app stores, you know, two and a half million reviews. We have hundreds of millions of Wi-Fi hotspots all around the world. Uh, I think we're up to 200 countries or 200 plus countries all around the world now. Um, our eSIM works in 70 plus countries. And uh, if you if you help us, you help the community, which is, you know, that's the most important thing. We're just trying to get bring internet, free internet to the whole world. That's our goal. Now, one last thing I was just thinking about is when you think about the amount of users who have downloaded the application versus active users, what do you feel is the most important part to keep these users active within the application? So our, our app is more like a flashlight, we like to say. You only use it when you need it. So when you're back home in Michigan, you don't really need it, right? you got 5G. Okay, yeah. You, you know. so, so what's amazing is, is that people keep our app. So it's not like you travel and you, then you delete it. So people keep it because they love the experience. So then they yeah. say, hey, every time I'm going to travel. So that's why we have 5 million active users. But they're typically every month different active users, which is also important. Um, so it's, it's constantly a rotation of these users. As we see the eSIM part of the business go be- get better, people are using it at home for the eSIM. So we're seeing more and more people kind of keep it more active. Okay. Now that makes a lot of sense to me. It's, it's an ever-changing group of users who are active within the application. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, you use it like a flashlight. I mean, I don't know how often you use your flashlight, but when you need it, you really need it. Right. But, uh, yeah, so that's kind of how we are. When we need it, we need it. <laughs> All right, great. Well, Gary, I appreciate you being here today. This has been Wi-Fi Map, connecting the world. Thank you for being here, brother. Thank you, Joshua. It was a pleasure. All right, have a good day. T- take care, man.